Just to let you know, this is not the piece of crap 2005 movie based on the video game that I never played. Watch it, Alan. I'm shooting. Alone in the dark. Vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. <laughs> Horror fans know the classic 80s slasher movies. Nightmare on Elm Street, Friday the 13th, Maniac, hell yeah. But then you have the lesser known slashers like Madman, Slumber Party Massacre, and of course the movie we're talking about today, Alone in the Dark. The movie begins in a secluded mental asylum run by Dr. Bane, played by the legend of the genre, Donald Pleasance. He's what you call a... crazy person. Can I ask you what it was that you just said to him? I told him uh, if he didn't stop all this nonsense, I would hoist him up and cut him in half. <laughs> Sometimes you have to be forceful with them. He's a perfect example of what would happen if the lunatics ran the asylum. He has these eccentric methods of dealing with the patients. He refers to them as voyagers instead of patients. You get the feeling that he'd be better off in a padded room. It's interesting how Donald Pleasance has a knack for playing psychiatrists that are a few hookers short of a brothel. Move your hands uh, in front of your face three times, like that. Yes, and then the intestines will stay inside. Anyway, the asylum has this one floor that houses four particularly dangerous inmates. You have this big fat guy named Ronald who likes to break people with his bare hands, and he also has an affinity for little girls. There's also a preacher played by Martin Landau. He's this crazed priest that likes to set fire to churches. And recompense upon thee all thy abominations! Hey, preacher, my man. Don't you call me preacher! Hey, now listen you to me, man! There's Frank Hawks. He's this crazed army veteran. He's the leader of the group, played by Jack Palance, and he steals every scene that he's in. There are no crazy people, Doctor. We're all just on vacation. And finally, we have this odd guy known as the Bleeder. He doesn't really like to show his face, he doesn't talk much, and whenever he goes into a murderous rage, he gets these nosebleeds. The four inmates become very angry with the new doctor, Dr. Dan Potter, but there's nothing to worry about because this asylum has a high-tech security system that runs on electricity. Of course, there's a blackout in town, and this place didn't want to invest in a generator. I made the lights go out. So during this blackout, the security system goes down, these lunatics escape from the asylum, and we get our body count. Alone in the Dark is one of those horror movies that once you get past one dumb concept, you're in for a good horror movie. The idea of an asylum having a security system solely based on electricity with no real fail-safe system, it can kind of take you out of the movie. But if you can just accept that and allow yourself to get absorbed into the story, you get a damn good slasher film. Dr. Potter and his family make for some entertaining protagonists. It's the contrast between the quiet, introverted Dan Potter and his free spirit wife and sister that make them so amusing. Dan is this straight-laced, kind of shy individual, while his wife and sister like to go to punk rock clubs. You're really gonna like them. I mean, they have a really good go reputation. Stuff. They're called the sick fucks. Oh my oh, we... god. <laughs> Speaking of punk rock, the scene in the club is a lot of fun. First of all, because it's obvious how out of place Dan is here. Second of all, because of the band that they got to play during this scene. They got an actual punk rock band, and they're called the Sick Fucks. It's a blast watching this band play their over-the-top song while the sister dances about in the mosh pit. Get down! But 
but the ones who steal the show are of course the villains. The Bleeder is an interesting character because he doesn't like to show his face. The only way we know who he is is because he gets nosebleeds whenever he kills someone. The big boy Ronald is just so massive that he can just pick people up and shake them until their necks break. The guy who played Ronald also played Dynamo in The Running Man. There's this one moment where he picks someone up by the neck and it's not a stunt or anything, they actually had him pick this woman up by the neck. <laughs> the two best villains are Hawks and Preacher. Preacher is such a great lunatic, whenever he's going on his insane ramblings you can't help but smile. He also has a good pair of crazy eyes. I love me some good crazy eyes. Jack Palance, as Hawks, is a great leader for this group of lunatics. He's so unpredictable. At one moment he seems calm and collected, and then the next moment he just explodes. Well, I guess I'll see you later. Dr. Potter! Happy? Trails. But the best part is after they escape. Because this is taking place during a blackout, you have a lot of people out on the streets rioting and looting, so these guys are able to blend in with the crowds. They make their way to this department store where a lot of people are looting, and they start stocking up on weapons. And there's this very interesting part. The bleeder grabs a hockey mask to cover his face. <laughs> Alone in the Dark was in production the same time as Friday the 13th Part 3. That's the movie where Jason got his iconic hockey mask. There's debate over which of these movies came up with the idea of the hockey mask first. Alone in the Dark was released before Friday the 13th Part 3, but there's still some debate. One of the most tense scenes is when this young couple is getting frisky on top of a bed, and this being a slasher film, we all know that's gonna go well. The boyfriend gets pulled under the bed by Preacher. So you have this girl on top of the bed freaking out, and it gets even more intense. Billy? It's a great moment because she can't really get off the bed because the guy will get her, but he can still get her by stabbing through the mattress. Alone in the Dark is a good, forgotten slasher from the 80s. Once you've gone through the more known slasher films, this is a good one to check out. Add it to your watch list if you're a slasher fan. Now let me ask you, what are some of your favorite underrated horror movies from the 80s? This is your buddy Justin, here to remind you that the Grindhouse will never die. Dr. Potter! Happy trails?